Keith, I've been watching uh, really all day long. Um, actually, it's just yesterday, I should say, this NVIDIA deal for Grok. And if you zoom out, I think it says so much about the mindset of companies and how the AI bubble, it may only be just beginning, uh, despite all this AI bubble talk. Sure, Brian, and thanks for having me. We're looking at it in a, in a similar fashion. It's not necessarily a uh, bid for a competitor. It seems like, and this is kind of what we've gathered from it, is the it's a it's a it's a investment into capacity expansion beyond the the current um, GPU foot platform that NVIDIA currently has. Um, it's an investment alongside of uh, a, 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 a competitor, and not only in in the vertical they're in but also looking at it from aspect of just the capacity growth that seems to be, this is a, a positive affirmation of that capacity growth that grows beyond what NVIDIA currently has in their, uh, in their vertical. So this is, a, in our opinion, a very positive um, check point for uh, where we are in the cycle. Um, there's a lot of questions about where we're on the cycle and infrastructure build and is it overpriced and, and have, we, have we gotten ahead of ourselves. NVIDIA with this um, investment, in our opinion, is saying, no, we haven't. Uh, there's still a lot to come in this, in this investment phase. And uh, I got to give a shout out to one of my uh, ex followers here, a watcher of the show, uh, Sideline24. One of my resolutions, Inez, was to go out and visit an AI data center. This user telling me they have, uh, he's working on a project out in Zo Arizona to build an AI infrastructure plant. So it's just, it's fascinating to see what's happening in this country because of AI. And as a question to you on this, which I, I haven't seen brought up a lot on this NVIDIA Grok deal, did, was NVIDIA potentially at risk at losing its number one spot? Not today, not tomorrow, but let's say, five years down the line to a company like Grok, and they figure, why not just pay big now, shell out a big check, and then nobody can touch us. You know, Sazia, I was listening to an investor of Grok uh, on his uh, channel about wh why mm -hmm. this is so interesting. And this is basically what he was saying is, is that NVIDIA is seeing the writing on the wall when it comes to specialized chips, because you played that uh, sound of Jonathan Ross talking about uh, the in inference technology that they have. And this is where uh, some are seeing that where the money is at with these specialized chips and why NVIDIA would pay three times the value of this company. And by the way, Jonathan Ross is seen as a engineering genius within this industry. So yes, uh, it, it may be that it, the NVIDIA chips, which are generalized chips, which are good at many tasks, are great, but now where the money is being seen going forward, where the reoccurring money may be, is in this specialized chip space. And that's why they are essentially uh, buying this company in this deal that, by the way, is this licensing deal, which is an interesting also format for uh, these. Now we are seeing more and more of these types of deals where the talent goes to the uh, goes to now NVIDIA, where the, the company is still, uh, is still sort of more of a shell company Company, and this is because of antitrust issues to make sure that this goes through. But yes, Jensen Wang may be admittedly saying we have a great chip, but now we are now acquiring this specialized chip with Jonathan Ross, did the TPU over at Google. So uh, it's, it's definitely seen as where the market may be going. And uh, I should mention, reach out to Grok. Uh, they de declined to make Jonathan available for an interview. Uh, Keith, let me get back to you here because really next year, you're getting. You're starting to get the sense. If we haven't gotten it already, the, the some of the world's largest tech companies might go hunting in private company land. You know, the companies that have been raising money all the past two years at big valuations, they may go shopping to further boost you know their capabilities. Uh, what do you think about that? We absolutely think that's, that has to happen in order for the story the story to continue to evolve beyond where it has has started with you know, the quote unquote picks and shovels over the last couple of years. Um, we feel like to justify the valuation, the, the story has to continue to, to evolve in the spaces that we just haven't really grasped yet, uh, in particular on the private market side, but we've seen uh, some developments on the private credit side as far as the funding that have drawn some questions as to kind of where, how far this can go and how, how it will be all capitalized. So um, in 2026, the story has to continue to evolve away from some of the uh, main culprits of the last two years uh, into spaces that the market really hasn't appreciated um, the AI story to evolve to just yet. So we're looking for that evolution um, and we feel like it has to come to justify valuations going forward. Keith, how, w how willing would you be to get outside of the, the MAG7 and some of these big tech plays and, and get involved in the broadening out of the AI trade? And I'm even talking about something as 
uh, companies that make concrete, companies that make steel rebar that are helping build these, uh, put up these AI data centers, electrical power companies. Are you, are you, are you comfortable taking it to that level yet? Sure, and our uh, equity strategy, we've been taking it there for the last, um, over the last year or so. Um, yes, we're, we're looking at spaces, particularly in industrials, um, in, in that, also uh, in the utilities as well. Um, ancillary plays to the AI adjacent names and stories and industries that benefit from this build out, which might not have as much built in their valuations, also might not have as much debt or risk associated with with this current trade. So we're, we're looking at all those spaces that um, we can have a, a cheap entry into um, investing in this, um, this next phase of the build out that we feel like 2026 is really going to start to embrace more outside of the MAC7. So we're absolutely been looking in those spaces.